1.5, we'll talk about the nitrogen cycle. So you want to be able to explain the steps in reservoir interactions in the nitrogen cycle, which is the movement of atoms and molecules containing the element nitrogen between sources and sinks. All right, this is the diagram I want you guys to copy. I know it's kind of a, a lot. The big thing to take away from this is that the nat atmospheric nitrogen is not a source that plants and animals can use. We're breathing it in all the time, but that bond between the two nitrogens is so strong that our bodies just cannot break that apart. It's just not going to happen. So even if we're using all this nitrogen, we can't use any of it. We depend on um, nitrogen-fixing bacteria, and sometimes lightning, uh, to fix it for us. So what that means is it breaks apart that, that strong triple bond, and then it bonds it to things like hydrogen or oxygen, and those bonds are a lot easier to break and a lot easier to incorporate into our our compounds of, of, that we use in our cells. So the plants will take up that nitrogen um, and then it gets passed on to us when we eat the plants or eat things that ate those plants. It gets used in our bodies for proteins and DNA and um, all sorts of you know really important life-giving stuff. And then we plants and animals will hold on to that nitrogen until we die and then are decomposed and then that's then returned back to the soil where it can then go back to the plants and go through this whole cycle again or more bacteria will get a hold of that again and then put it back into the atmosphere. So we call it denitrifying bacteria. And that's important because that way we don't take all the nitrogen out of the atmosphere. You know, it's, it's a balance. Uh, the nitrogen cycle, all the reservoirs um, need to hold on to their, their nitrogen for a pretty short amount of time versus, you know, in in uh, the carbon cycle, you have some reservoirs that can hold on to a very long period of time. Nitrogen's not so much. So nitrogen fixation is that process I was telling you about that uh, the atmospheric nitrogen is converted to something that we can actually use, typically ammonia. Um, and then, of course, ammonia can also be turned then into nitrates. Um, the big important thing to realize after that is it's something that we can use. It's available for uptake by plants, and it can be synthesized into plant tissue, and then we can then get that when we eat plants or eat um, and was ate that plant. Uh, another important thing to know about the nitrogen cycle is the atmosphere is a major reservoir of nitrogen. So it's like a huge portion of that nitrogen. And uh, I'd rather you copy the other one, but I want to point this one out because uh, the, it shows the human impact on the nitrogen cycle. So the big thing for us is that our use of fertilizers. Um, especially have increased the amount of nitrates getting into to waterways. And it sounds like a bad thing, or this sounds like a good thing, right? But it's actually a bad thing because those nitrates are eliminating factors. So th what that means is it because it's typically available... Um, no, let me explain this better, right? Nitrates allows for plants and algae to grow. And so it's going to determine how much they can grow. So if they have a lot of nitrates in that water, they're going to grow and grow and grow and grow. And that's how we get to algae blooms, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more when we get to the phosphate cycle, because or the phosphorus cycle, because it's a similar process. Um, but yeah, that is it. Now it's your turn to explain the steps and reservoir interactions in the nitrogen cycle, focusing primarily on things like nitrogen fixation and then assimilation, like how that is important to us and then how we impact it.